this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the perfect day market tote. It's a free pattern on mooglyblog.com, and you'll need the written pattern to complete this project. Follow the link in the description, and there you'll find a link to the written pattern, both right and left handed tutorials, as well as links to all the supplies you need to make this pattern. I used Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie in three colors gray, loofah, and white, which you can see here, as well as a furls K hook. You'll also, of course, need your standard crochet supplies, scissors, yarn needles, stitch markers, and maybe even a tape measure if you want to check gauge. Although this is a tote bag, so gauge isn't quite as important. Let's go ahead and take a look at the finished bag. Okay, so here we have the finished tote. You can see it's got the three colors, gray, loofah, and white, and it's worked from the bottom up. It's a little big, it is a big bag. Let me show you, just to give you some scale here, here in my hands. And you can make this bag actually any size. That's one of the really fun things about this pattern. But let me show you how it comes together here before we get started on the actual crocheting. Here we've got the bottom, and you can see it's just worked in circles all the way out, standard increases until you have the size you want. Again, in the written pattern, I have specific instructions for this size, but the great thing about this pattern is honestly you can stop at any of these points and the rest will still work you just might want to take out a few rows if it starts to get really tall and skinny or go with tall and skinny if that's what you like so after you've finished making your circles then it's time to start working evenly up the sides and we have a couple rows of that and then we start our wrapped stitches and plain stitches uh, repeat it's just a simple two row repeat wrapped stitches then double crochet wrap stitches, double crochet, wrap stitches, double crochet on up. And you just change colors. Um, for this size bag, I actually used the entire skein of gray. So this was as far as I could get with this one. If you made a smaller bag, you might make more gray. You could make it all in one color too. Of course, it's totally up to you. But you can see here, I switched to the loofah, just another row of double crochet, wrap, double crochet, until we work all the way up to the top. Then we've just got a couple rows of single crochet, we make a couple of holes for the handles, and I'll show you how to do that here too in just a few minutes. Here we've got these handles I made. You can see here, hopefully, that I have used the last two colors, the loofah and the white, because I did use all the gray, to make the handles. If your color distributions are different, you can use different colors for the handles, and of course, use whatever kind of handles you like. Also with these holes, it's a great place to attach pre-purchased handles, if that's the kind of handles you want to use for your bag. So you can really customize it and make it totally your own. So now let's go ahead and go over the stitches themselves. Okay, for this tutorial, I'm just going to use the gray because it's a little bit easier to see against the white. And if you follow the written pattern, it starts with gray anyway. So this pattern also starts with a magic circle. If you're not familiar with the magic circle, I do have a tutorial specifically for this technique that I will link out at the link in the description, but I'll go over it relatively quickly here. I'm going to take the working end of my yarn and wrap it around my finger twice towards me. Then I'm going to go under both loops and pull that first loop, the one furthest back, under the one that's closest, and then I can just start crocheting. I always like to make a little slip stitch there. It just sort of anchors things down. It doesn't really count as a slip stitch. You can see it didn't add any height, but I find that it holds the magic circle together really well. Now from there, you can ch chain three. One, two, three, and this will count as your first double crochet. Then we're going to work 11 more double crochets into the ring. So I'm just gonna yarn over and go under both of those loops with each of the stitches. And I know it seems really fiddly right now on my finger, but once I get this stitch finished, very carefully there, I can pull my finger out and now the ring will stay much more stable. There we are. So that's our first two double crochets. So we need to crochet 10 more right into the ring. And every time I go into this ring, I do want to make sure that I go under both of those loops, both the circle itself and the tail. Because when I pull on that tail, that's what will help me close up the ring really nicely and tightly. If you don't like the magic ring, or you just prefer not to use it, or you can't get the hang of it, whatever, for whatever reason, you can start with a simple like chain four and just and join that to work in a ring um, and work into that circle. It's totally up to you. If you have a different method you prefer to start your circles with, it doesn't really matter. It's just a simple circle, whatever works for you. The point is to get 12 double crochets in there. So we should be getting pretty close. I'll do a couple more here and then I'll count because I can never count and talk at the same time. Let's see here, what do we have so far? We've got, we wanna make sure to count that chain three as our first one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I just need two more double crochets to go. So again, I just wanna make sure every time that I work into a magic ring, I do work under both of those loops because here we are. 
that is our 12 and I'm just going to take this little tail and when I pull on it you can see that closes that center right up now one of the major complaints about magic rings is that they tend to come undone over time but that can be fixed when you weave in your ends if you go both directions so keep weaving in this way a little bit with your needle and then weave back the other way and I find that that really locks them in quite well so then I'm just going to go ahead and join to the top of the chain three since that counts as our first double crochet always the fiddliest part and if you don't want to use a chain three if you don't like the way the chain three looks you can also use the chainless starting double crochet which I've linked in the pattern or if you prefer a lot of people like to do a chain two and not count it as a stitch I've used that quite a few quite a bit in a lot of my patterns so whichever way you prefer is fine just get those 12 double crochets in the first row there or round I should say from there we just work standard circle increases for the base so I'm going to chain three again for our first double crochet and then work another double crochet right into that first stitch and then we're just going to work two double crochets in each stitch around if you're not familiar with standard circle increases typically you're going to increase by the number that you had in your first round so in the first round here we had 12 so if I work two double crochets in each of these stitches at the end of this round I'll have 24 so we'll have increased by 12 in the next round you'll see I only increase in every other stitch but that gives us 36 which is an increase of another 12 so we'll just go up by 12 stitches every time and again like I said you can actually stop making increases with this pattern wherever you like um, at any point it will still work because the stitch pattern used in the body the wrapped stitches which are really the only pattern stitches is just a multiple of three so since we started with a multiple of 12 in our bottom here it will always work out and that's one of the really fun things about this pattern of course if you change the size you'll need to adjust exactly where the handles go because you won't have as many stitches or maybe you'll have more stitches but I also have a tutorial on how to make bag handles that goes over how to figure out the placement on those if you're doing some customization there too and that is linked out in the pattern as well as well as in this tutorial so you can see I'm working my way around here almost all the way around and our circle is growing nicely just going to continue working two double crochets in each of these stitches and then I'll go over a little bit of the next round with you here and then from there like I say it's just standard uh, increases for the circles so you can follow the written pattern I'm not going to crochet uh, quite as big a bag here for our demo I'm actually going to go ahead and make one of the smaller sizes so you can see how that looks too and uh, yeah absolutely you can make this any size you like so we are almost there got two more stitches for this round one and two and then I can go ahead and again join to the top of that chain three or whatever you're using for your first double crochet there we are so how do the increases go from here again if you're not familiar with standard circles it's going to be once you've made one um, with this sort of plan it's very easy to see I think how they just sort of it's a, just a mathematical formula so for this round what we're going to do that chain three counts as our first double crochet I'm not gonna put another one here this time I'm gonna go to the next one and put two there because we don't want to do we don't want to do two stitches in each round here or we'd end up with 48 and that's too many and that would actually start creating I believe it's what makes a hyperbolic plane so we don't want that we'd get a bunch of ruffles we want our circle to be nice and flat so I've got let me talk a little bit about what I just did here after I make this stitch so for this round we've got one stitch in the first stitch two stitches in the next and then we just have our repeat one two so it'll be one stitch two stitches one stitch two stitches all around since we've got 24 stitches in the previous round we just want 12 increases or I should say an increase of 12 stitches so we just want to put one in every other round now what would happen when we get to round four round four is going to be following the same formula but again we only want to increase by 12 stitches so in round four we would double crochet in the first stitch and then double crochet in the next stitch and then put two in the third one so it'd be one one two one one two for the fourth round and then of course for the fifth round it would be double crochet in three of them and then increase so double crochet double crochet double crochet then two 
double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, then two double crochet. So you can see you just increase by having one more stitch in between your increases as you go for the circle. Again, if you look at the written pattern, it is pretty darn simple. I do move the increases around a little bit in the written pattern. If you keep your same pattern, you always have the increase at the end of your little grouping, your repeat, then eventually you get a um, sort of a, a shape with points on it. This would be, well, it would be 12 points, and I can't think off the top of my head what that's called. Um, not a hexagon, obviously, but whatever has 12 points. And we don't want that. We don't want our bottom of our bag to be pointy. So you can just move exactly where those increases are in the repeats, and that's something I've done in the written pattern as well. So I'll just go ahead and finish round three here, and then I will meet you back here, and we'll work evenly and start working the sides of our tiny little bag. Here we are at the end of round three, and I think this is where I'm going to stop for my little bag today. Again, it's one of the fun things about this pattern. You can make a tiny little gift bag or a great big tote bag, whatever you like. So if I followed the written pattern, I would have continued increasing all the way out through round eight, which has 96 double crochets. So those are some of the numbers I'll be referring to here, even though I'm making a smaller bag. For rounds nine and 10, we simply chain three, one, two, three, and then double crochet in each stitch around. Not that first stitch, of course, that first chain three counts as our first double crochet, but every remaining stitch. So we're just going to work evenly for a couple rounds to start our height and start curving in the bottom of our bag so that we can start working our really fun stitch pattern. So just double crochet in every stitch around, join when you get to the end, and do that for rounds nine and 10, and I'll meet you back here for round 11. Okay, so after you've finished round nine and 10, you should see the bottom of your bag starting to curve up a little bit, and it's time to begin round 11. Again, we're going to start with a chain three, which counts as our first double crochet, and then I'm going to double crochet in the next stitch. Now, here's where I like to use stitch markers, and I didn't write this into the written pattern because it's just a sort of a convenience tip more than anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull up one of my stitch markers here. Whatever size you like. These ones are by Clover. They're some of my favorites. And I'm just going to put this in that top loop of the chain three, like so, under both those loops. This will make it a little bit easier when it's time to join, because I can find those really easily. But also it's going to make it a little bit easier to make this wrapped stitch. And that's what we're doing on round 11. We start with a chain three as a double crochet, double crochet in the next, and now we're going to double crochet around the posts of the two double crochets just made. So let me show you how that's done. Get my hook back in here. I'm going to yarn over as for a standard double crochet. And then here's the only part where it's really fiddly. I'm gonna use this stitch marker to kind of anchor it. And then I'm going to go around both of those posts. You can see I kind of let go of the stitch marker there and I'm just working really gently to kind of urge that stitch around. And then I can finish it as a double crochet, like so. It's only this first one that this that is this fiddly, let me reassure you first of all. But then you can see I can kind of use that stitch marker to pull it up and pull that double crochet we just made right there down a little bit. That just keeps it secure. And then I'll be able to, when I join here at the end of this round, that will hold that down so it won't slip up over. And this will hold it a little more securely too. From there, we can continue our stitch pattern. So I'm going to skip the next stitch and then work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So there's one. There we are, and there's two, whoops, there we are. And then I'm going to double crochet around these two posts. So this one's a lot easier. We don't have to worry about holding things down because it's attached to other stitches beforehand. It's not gonna go anywhere, nice and secure. Then we skip the next one, double crochet in the next two. This is our repeat. That's all there is to it. Crochet in the next one, and then we are ready to make another wrapped stitch. Yarn over, go just around, just to the side of both of those. I'm not going through any stitches here, I'm just going right through that space. Pull your loop, loop up and around and finish the double crochet as usual. I like to sometimes, if they end up a little high like this, give them a little tug. I think it looks a little nicer when they're a little lower on there. Don't forget to skip that next stitch. We don't want to increase at all. If we didn't skip, because we're working that wrapped stitch, if we didn't skip a stitch there, we'd actually be increasing. So we wanna make sure to do that. Plus it helps show off the wrapped stitches a little better. So I'm just gonna continue doing this all the way around until I get to the end, and then I can join 
with a slip stitch in the top of the chain three. So keep practicing your wrapped stitches and I will see you when we get to the end of this round. Okay, so here I've reached the end of round 11 and all I need to do is slip stitch to finish off the round, right in the top of that chain three. Now, sometimes when I'm trying to do it, it's easier to do it with the stitch marker in there. Sometimes I just like to open up the space and pull it out before I do it, whatever works for you. And of course the stitch marker itself is optional, but it does make that initial stitch a little bit easier, that initial wrapped stitch. So that's it for round 11. After that, round 12, is just chain three and double crochet in each stitch around. Now you wanna make sure, of course, that you work both into your double crochets and the wrapped double crochets, but you don't have to do anything else fancy on this row. Just work right across the previous round and you'll be absolutely fine. And that really is our two row repeat. Rounds 11 and 12, or however you wanna look at it, I guess it would be 10 and 11 are more like our repeats, but it's just double crochet and then wrapped stitches, double crochet and then wrapped stitches. Those are our two basic rows. And in the written pattern, I've got um, places where you can you know, add other colors, switch colors, do stripes, whatever you like. Or of course, you can just keep on going with the same color if you just wanna make a solid colored bag. I think this pattern really works beautifully either way. So I'm just going to finish off this round right here. And then I will pretend that rather than being round 12, that this is round 30 which is the round we get to after we've added all our stripes and all our height. So again, refer to the written pattern uh, if you want to know where to put the color changes or of course, put them wherever you like. You really make this pattern your own. So after I finish this, we'll go to round 31 and start talking a little bit about how we make those handles. Okay, so if you've worked all the way through round 30, then you'll have obviously a lot more height than I've got here, but those rows are just gonna be repeats of these last two rows here. We've got a wrapped row and then a double crochet row. Then it's time to start thinking about finishing off our bag. So for round 31, we're just going to chain one and then single crochet in each stitch around. Just like we did previously with our double crochet rows, we're simply doing single crochets here. So again, we're working even. If you've made the full size bag, that's 96 stitches. So you'll have 96 single crochets in this round. So I will go ahead and see you after this round because that's where we start talking about placing our stitch markers for our handles. All right, so after round 31, you should have 96 double, single crochets, excuse me, or however many you had to keep working evenly there. So this is where we then place the stitch markers, which will help us determine our handle placement. Now, in the original pattern, if you've made it full size with 96 stitches, then you'll place your stitch markers in stitches numbered 11, 33, 59, and 81. And that's just counting from the first stitch. So you'd count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, place a stitch marker there, then do the same thing with stitches 33, 59, and 81. Now, if you're making a smaller bag like I've done here, which is more like a basket shape really, but you can determine how you want to place your handles. I have a separate tutorial for that. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure my hook doesn't roll away. There we go. But basically the idea is lay it flat, determine where you want your handles to go, and just start placing stitch markers. Just like I just told you to do in the numbered stitches, this if you're making it up, if you're adjusting, customizing the pattern, then you need to just kind of eyeball it first. That's how I recommend doing it anyway. First you eyeball it where you think you want the handles to be. Like so, think, okay, that looks pretty good. That looks about right. But then you need to count your stitches. You want to make sure, like if this is your front handle and this is your back handle, that you have the same number of stitches in between your stitch markers and that you also then have the same number of stitches between the handles themselves, the side stitch markers here, so that you don't end up with handles off to one side or offset. And again, after you've counted, lay it flat, make sure they line up again, then it's ready to start crocheting round, uh, it would be round 32. So I'm going to make sure the placement on these lines up and then we'll get back to round 32 together. Okay, so once you've got your stitch markers in there, then you're ready to begin round 32. Again, if you're making this full size, those will be stitches 11, 33, 59 and 81. Otherwise, you can follow that tutorial to figure out where you want to put your handles. So I'm just going to insert my hook back in my active loop here, pull that down, and then for round 32, I'm going to chain one and I'm just going to single crochet in each stitch to the first marker, not in the first marker itself. I just wanna crochet right up to it. So I will work my way across here. And I've got my first stitch marker waiting for me right here. So you can see I single crocheted in the stitch right before it, but then I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, 
I'm going to skip the marked stitch and single crochet in the stitch after that. And that's how I'm going to handle every stitch with a stitch marker. So I just gonna, I'm just going to continue single crocheting across here until I get to the next one, which with our tiny little bag here won't be too far. There we are. And then I want to manage, I wanted to mention too, the handles that I made on this bag are where I think they look nice, but if you wanted to adjust them, if you lay out your stitch markers and you say, you know, I like my handles a little further apart or a little closer together, or I just want to make shorter handles, or I'm using a purchased handle, it needs to be slightly differently spaced, then you can absolutely adjust those markers for yourself. Just again, make sure they line up nicely. So here I am at my second stitch marker. So I'm just going to go ahead and chain three again. Whoops, two and three, there we are skip the marked stitch and single crochet in each stitch after that. And then I will do the same thing when I get to stitch markers three and four and then slip stitch to join at the end of the round. So that's all we do for round 32 and I'll be back with round 33 here in just a moment. All right, and it's time for round 33, which is the final round of our actual crocheting here. You can see I've got four chain three loops there and we're just going to chain one again and single crochet in each stitch across until we get to those chain three loops. And then when we get to the chain three loop, we're going to work three single crochets in each of those chain spaces. Now don't try and bother working directly into the chains unless that's just something you really prefer doing. You can work right into the chain space and I'll show you how that works right here. We've got that chain space. I'm just gonna go right into the space and pull up my loop and make my single crochet. So that's one and two and three. And then just continue single crocheting in each stitch across. You can take your stitch markers out at this point if you like, if they're getting in your way. Uh, it's, we don't, we're not gonna need those again. Our holes are gonna be pretty obvious at this point. But you can see this gives us a really nice sturdy hole to attach our handles to. So I'm just gonna continue making round 33, as should you. And then when we get to the end of this round, we will join and break our yarn and we will be done crocheting and it'll be time to make our handles. Okay, and here we've finished crocheting the bag portion. You can see I've got my four holes here ready for my handles on our teeny tiny little sample bag. It even sits up quite nicely like a little basket almost. So let's go ahead and set this aside and talk about the handles themselves. Now these are actually crocheted too. I know I said we were done crocheting, but that was just on the bag. We're gonna crochet our handles. Unless of course you're using purchased handles, in which case you are done crocheting and you can attach those however they need to be attached. But to crochet the handles that I've got in this pattern, we're going to hold two colors together. This is the gray and I'm using the loofah here. Uh, in the written pattern, I use the loofah and the white, but that's hard to see. So I'm just going to keep using the gray instead. So I want to leave a nice long tail here before I make my slip knot because this will be used to sew the handle on and assemble it onto the bag uh, when we're done crocheting it. So then I'm just going to make my slip knot and I'm just holding these two strands right together. With that on my hook, then I'm going to crochet 100, or chain I should say, for 112 inches. And I want to chain tightly here. So I'm just going to go ahead and really make these chains tight. I'm not going to work back into them at all. So it doesn't matter how many there are or anything. I just want to get to 112 inches. And of course with handles, you need to make two. So I'll be doing this twice, or I did do this twice when I made the finished bag. So just keep crocheting for 112 inches or so. Now, if you want to adjust the length of this handle, you'll need to crochet longer, of course, if you want a longer handle, shorter if you want a shorter handle. And I want to show you a little trick for this that I used to help determine this when I was designing it myself, because of course I had a finished length in mind, but this isn't the last step. After you've crocheted 112 inches of chain, let me just go ahead and put a stitch marker in this active loop so I can come back to it to add more inches. Then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to treat this as if it was my yarn strand. I'm going to make another slip knot and I want to keep it within the chain portion. I want to still leave this tail end free here for sewing. So sometimes this takes just a little bit of fiddling to get it lined up just so, but you just want to get your slip knot right there at the base of the chain section. And it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. This is all going to get sewn together in the end anyway. But you want to again, get that nice and tight, like so down on your hook. Then you're just going to chain your chains, which in written instructions was difficult to uh, explain, but hopefully here is pretty obvious. And just take your time and really pull each chain through. Again, you want this to be nice and tight. And then after you have finished chaining your 112 inches, of course, they've shrunk up quite a bit. You saw how long we chained there, and that only made 
four chains now with the doubled one. So if you want to adjust this, if you want to make custom length handles, what I recommend is you do some of this chaining, come back and do some of this chaining, do some of this chaining, come back and do some of this chaining. And you can use the stitch markers, or rather even just one stitch marker moving back and forth to hold that active loop of each one open until you get two handles the length you want. Now, when you get to the end of your handles, if you find you've broken it off, you've done that second chaining step, you've gotten to the end of this part, and you need to adjust them to make them the same length, you can go ahead and take a couple of those chains out on the longer one just to help make them exactly the same length, especially if you've already cut your yarn, you don't want to try and add more. You can just take a couple out and you'll get about the same length. And this handle's got a little bit of stretch to it, you can see here, but not too much. It's nice and secure and it creates a really nice effect holding the two colors together. So you're just going to, like I say, do the standard chains here for 112 inches or however long you want and then chain up those together as if they were a strand themselves and that creates a really nice sturdy handle. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more chaining here so I can create a good sized handle to demonstrate with and then we'll go ahead and sew it onto our bag. All right, so when you get to the end of step two and you've chained your chains, so to speak, you just wanna go ahead and pull that last little bit through the final chain to secure just as you normally would if it was just regular chains. Now, this is where you might find, after you pull that down nice and tight, you've got a couple extra chains sticking out here on the end, especially once you've made your two and made sure they're the same length. If you've got a couple extra chains here, it's fine to go ahead and take out that knot very carefully here. Just undo it and then go ahead and pull out any extra chains. This time I just had one. So then I just want to stick my hook back in there and pull those ends through again and make sure it's pulled down nice and secure. You can see that's right up against our second, our second step of chaining, I guess you could say. So with that done, once you've got two and they're the same length, it's time to go ahead and sew them onto your bag. So let's go ahead and do that with our one right here. Now I'm going to Put. Remember I mentioned those long tails at the beginning. You also want to have those at the end. These are ended up being a little bit longer because of the chains I undid, but that's fine. We just want to have enough to sew with. So I'm going to go ahead and put both strands on my yarn needle like so. And then I am going to go from the outside of the bag to the inside of the bag with those strands and then just pull the handle right on through the hole here just a little bit. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the whole bag here so it's a little easier to work with. Actually, I'm gonna pull this back out first. I'm gonna keep the yarn through the hole, but before I pull it through the hole, I want to count back eight chains. And this is just what I found to be a good distance. Um, if you like a bigger loop, if you like a different look, you can sew it to wherever you like, but I found it worked really well to sew it to the eighth chain. So I'm going to count through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then when I pull it through, I can put my needle, get that in the center there, sorry, right through the back of that chain. That's where I like to sew it so that the front of the chain faces out as a handle. So I'll just sew right through the back of that chain there and oops, you see what happened. My yarn ends fell out, not a big deal. I'm gonna leave the needle there actually so I know right where I wanna be and then get those ends back on there like so, there we are and then I can go ahead and pull those through. And that just pulls those ends then up together like so. And then from here, you can just sew those ends together really nicely. This puts the cut end, if you will, the end of the handle on the inside of the bag. We wanna make sure the long is on the outside of the bag there. And then just sew these two pieces together here. It's a little fiddly and it's kind of awkward, but because you've got these two colors blended together, you don't have to really worry about hiding the stitches or anything. I just try and sort of sew through the backs of both of those chains there to create a really nice secure loop. And after you've done that, of course, then you can just bury your ends right in the handle and then come across and make sure, I just get this all untwisted here, make sure that you don't twist the handle as you go in and do the other side. And then of course, same thing on the back and you'll be all set. So let's take one more look at the finished bag. All right, and here we have our finished handle. So you can see this was round 33 with those holes we made, just as I showed you. And then I've sewn the handles coming from the outside in and just sewed those two ends together nice and secure. And if you've chained 112, you'll get some nice long handles like this. But of course, you can do whatever length you like. It's totally adjustable. You can see this is the white and the loofah held together, which I think is just really pretty and adds a little bit more interest to this bag.
So I hope you've enjoyed making the perfect day market tote. If you have, please give us a like and let us know what you think in the comments. Also, if you want to make it, go ahead and go to that link in the description. There again, you'll find the right and left-handed tutorials, link to the written pattern, and all the supplies you need and that you've seen here today. So thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell next to it so you get notified every time there's a brand new Moogly video. Happy crocheting. Thank you.